In one of my previous videos, I showed you guys how to cut danshiki in a modern way. And I do make a promise that I'm going to show you how to construct the pieces together to make a classy and good looking danshiki. So in this video, I will be fulfilling my promise by showing you how to sew danshiki with extension and go, which will help the danshiki to look classy and beautiful. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, this is Reggae School of Fashion. Please consider subscribing if you are yet to do so. And also give this video a thumbs up so that YouTube can show it to more people like you. Without further delay, let's get started. These are the pieces I cut out in the previous video. I have three pieces for the danshiki, one piece for the center piece, and two pieces for the sleeve. Remember I told you my danshiki will be with embroidery and I decided to use a contrasting color so that you guys can see it clearly and see how beautiful the danshiki really looks like. Also, I have two pieces for the extension. So this is the extension. And for the girl, I have four pieces. So if you are yet to watch the video on how to cut a danshiki, the link will be available in the description box. Also, I have another video on how to take measurement for danshiki because that is what you need first. You need to learn how to take the measurement before going into the cutting. So I have a video on how to take measurement for danshiki accurately. The link will be available in the description box as well. The first thing is to join the three pieces together. I have one piece for the center and two pieces for the sleeve. One will be on the right hand side and the other one will be on the left hand side. So this is the side I will be joining to the center piece. So make sure you indicate the wrong side and right side of your fabric in case your fabric has no wrong or right side. So you have to differentiate between the right side and the wrong side. It is very important. Now I will be joining the center piece and the sleeves together on the right side of the fabric. Normally we join on the wrong side. That is right side facing the right side. But in this case, I will be joining, making the wrong side to face the wrong side like so which means my seam allowance will come to the front if not go to the wrong side of the fabric this is because i want to make a french seam on the danshiki which will make the seam allowance to look flat the danshiki will be neat inside and outside so i'm positioning my fabric wrong side facing the wrong side not right side facing the right side as usual Now I've pinned the sleeve together with the center piece and I will be stitching with 0.5 inches seam allowance which I added. Don't forget I told you it is the wrong side facing the wrong side, not the right side facing the right side. So this is my seam allowance. My seam allowance will be on the right side and this is what I will be doing. I will start from the middle of my danshiki which is the shoulder. This is, this is the shoulder line. So that is where I'm starting. This is my seam allowance of 0.5 inches, right? I intentionally mark this so that you will understand very well. I'm making a French seam. It is not something difficult, it's very easy. So after marking your seam allowance, just make sure your fingertip is on that point. Then you fold your fabric towards the side not the center piece towards the sleeve like so can you see so that is what i will do all through 
so I'll fold and stitch on the edge. I will stitch on the edge like one over eight of seam. So that was I'm I'm doing like one over eight. I will stitch on the edge of the seam allowance all the way from the shoulder line downward to the waist level. So this is not to the hemline. I will stop when I get to the waist level. So you have to take the measurement of your waist level, take the measurement of the Danshiki length. If you don't know how to take all those measurements, I have a video on how to take measurement for Danshiki. So the link to the video is available in the description box. Now I'm stitching the edges of the seam allowance as I explained earlier. And I started from the shoulder line and I will stop on the waist level which I've marked out. Also, to make this easier for you, you can iron out the seam allowance. So when you fold towards the sleeve, just give it a press so it will flat and be easy to stitch. Now I've come to the other side of the danshi kit to stitch. Now I'm done with stitching the edges of the seam allowance and the next step is to open up the center piece and the sleeve. So after opening, this is what I have and this is my seam allowance as you can see. What happened is the seam allowance edges is the inside. So I will just press this down like so and I will run an edge stitch at the edge of the seam allowance. So this is called a French seam. You can call it a French seam or a flat felt seam. So before stitching, I will give it a press in order to make it flat and not bulky on the wrong side. Now I'm done ironing and I will proceed in making an hair stitch. So I'm very close to the end of the seam now. So this is the effect of the seam allowance after applying an edge stitch. As you can see, the seam allowance is on the right side and it is looking flat and neat. That is why it is called a flat felled seam or a French seam. So this is the right side and on the wrong side this is what I have. There is no traces of seam allowance on both sides of the fabric. So I will be applying the same process on the other side of the danshiki. I will attach the sleeve to the other side and make it a flat felt seam. Now I'm done joining the second side of the sleeve together with the danshiki and I applied a flat felt seam as well. So this is the effect on the other side. So this is the right side and this is the wrong side. So the next step is to attach the go on the four sides. So this is the front. I have two openings at the front and the back. I have two openings as well. So I cut out four pieces for my go. I will be using two pieces for the front and two pieces for the back. I have two openings at the front. 
So that was the side I joined the sleeve. If you remember, I did not join the sleeve all through to the hemline. I stopped on the waist level. So that was why I have openings at the front and the back. So this is one, two, three, and four. So I will be attaching the gold the same way I attached the sleeve to the center piece. That is wrong side facing the wrong side. And I will be making a flat felt seam as well. So instead of right side facing the right side, this will be wrong side facing the wrong side. So the effect of the goal is to make the danshiki stay well on the wearer. So I will be folding like 0 0.5 inches inward at the beginning of the danshiki, which is the hedge. So I'm folding it inward like so. This is what I had before and I fold it in. So when doing this you have to take your time make sure there is no folded fabric. So make sure your fabric is not squeezing. Okay. So I'll be marking my seam allowance of 0 0.5 inches, then fold it like so and run a stitch on the edge of the go on the hedges of the go all through now i'm ready to join the go together with the danshiki and i'm using the same method i used in attaching the sleeve so i'm stitching on the edges of the seam allowance first and the positioning and the positioning is wrong side facing the wrong side, not right side facing the right side. Now I'm done stitching the edges of the seam allowance. So I've joined the girl together with the danshiki. Then I will open it up. So this is what I have. This is the same allowance. Then I will flip it over to lay on the girl, not on the danshiki. Then I will run an edge stitch. But before applying an edge stitches, I will attach the other side of the girl to the danshiki so that I will be applying the edge stitches on both sides at the same time. So that is wrong side facing the wrong side. Now I've attached the go on both sides. This is the first side and this is the second side. So I will be applying the edge stitch on both sides of the go. From the M line to the top, from the hem line to the top. Now I'm stitching the other side of the same halal ones. I'm applying a head stitch. Now I will be finishing the upper part of the go.
Now I'm done finishing one side of the girl attached to the danshiki. I told you this will be in four places, so this is one out of four. And I'll be attaching the remaining three off the camera and I'll be back to show you the results. So guys, I'm done attaching the girl to the four openings I have on the danshiki. This is for the back. And this is for the other side of the back and I have two sides also for the front. So the last step is to close the two sides of the danshiki. You can see I still have the front and back opening by the side. In closing up the sides of the danshiki, I will be needing the armhole measurement. So that is the armhole depth. The armhole circumference measurement divided by two. Whatever you have, you have 2.5 inches to hit. For example, if the ammo circumference measurement I'm using is 18, so 18 divided by 2 is 9, so that 9 inches is the ammo depth, which means ammo depth is equal to ammo circumference divided by 2. In case you get lost or you are confused, I have a video on how to take measurements for male bodies, a male bodies pattern. The link to the video will be available in the description box under this video. Watch this video and you will understand the difference between the arm o depth and arm o circumference. So that is 9 plus 2.5. I have 11.5. So I will mark the point. Then I will be stitching the side with the same allowance I had it. So this is my ammo depth point. So I'll be placing the top of the extension on the ammo depth point. Wrong side facing the wrong side. So I will make sure the hedges of the danshiki cover up the same allowance I iron inward, like so. So then I will run the stitch from this hedge down to the M line of the danshiki. Now I'm done joining one side of the extension, then I will join the other side. Same way, same method, cover this hub like so. Then I will run a stitch, then I will run a stitch from the top all the way down to the M line. Now I'm attaching the other side of the extension. So you'll be aligning this through the arm O we measured out. So the arm O is the only opening you have in attaching the other side of the extension. So guys, this is the effect of the extension on the danshiki. This will help the danshiki to look classy and beautiful. So I will be repeating the same process on the other side of the danshiki and I will be showing you the final look of our beautiful and classy danshiki. So guys, this is the final look of our beautiful, elegant and classy danshiki on the mannequin. I love it, it's beautiful. I believe you love it as well. We've come to the end of this tutorial. I believe this tutorial has been helpful to you in one way or the other. Please consider subscribing to my channel 
and also share this video with your loved ones. Till we meet in my next video, always remember, there is no elevator to success. You have to take these stairs.